Good morning, GS fam. It's a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. Do we have any first or second time visitors? Please raise your hands. The ushers are going to bring you a card. So please hold your hands up so they can bring you a card. It's a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. Please stand up. Give some air fives, air naps, air hugs to your neighbors as we celebrate this beautiful day in the house of the Lord. All right, it's a joy to be back in the house of the Lord today. Please allow me to usher us into the presence of the Lord this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today humbled, favored, grateful, and honored to be in your presence today, Father God. We ask, we welcome your spirit into the house this morning. It says, your word says where two or three are gathered, that your presence will be felt, Father God. As we surrender and as we come to return to you all the glory, honor, and praise, we continue to bring forth our wing leadership, group leadership, and squadron leadership down to every airman. That you continue to provide the knowledge, the wisdom, the strength, the spirit of discernment so that they can make the appropriate decisions we just thank you for this opportunity to fellowship. Lord, we continue to bring forward to you those that are in ROM and quarantine and isolation, that the spirit of peace and comfort, for you are the healer and the redeemer, Father God. And as we go through the service today, we ask that you continue to arm Chaplain Hughes and the uh, praise and worship team. We ask that you continue to use them as a vessel one, to advance your kingdom and to Continue to bring souls to your ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, GS fam. Um, please grab your bulletins. Today's responsive reading is going to be from John 1, verses 4 and 5, 9 and 16. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. All who believed him and accepted, he gave the right to become children of God. From his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. Amen. I now welcome you to make a joyful noise unto the Lord.
hands in this song called The Sanctuary. We raise our hands because we want to give thanks to, the, to our God, to our Lord. And we raise our hands for those who can't or for those who are too afraid to. have a seat fam go ahead and have a seat so I'm going to do the announcements today I'm going to have a reminder about our New Year's Eve service we're gonna wait for this flyer because somebody in this sanctuary put some work into making it so I want y'all to see it <laughs> oh okay okay well, I will keep on going. So, um, 1900 on the 31st, we will be here and we will be praising the Lord for what he has done for us, to us, through us in 2020. If there is anyone that would like to actually share briefly what the Lord has done for them, to them, through them in 2020, please see me after the service, 30 seconds. 90 seconds, nothing more, nothing less, okay? Um, and then, oh, it really is acting crazy today. All right, so we are going to do a corporate fast. Now, I don't want you to feel any type of pressure to fast, abstain from food per se, but there's some things in our life that, you know, we enjoy and it'll be a little difficult to give up. So you can choose whether it's from social media, Netflixing, alcohol, meat. Um, and we're doing that on a biblical basis of, of when Jesus tells us when we fast, right? When we fast and when we pray. So it's not a, a matter of if we fast, but when we fast. And so just taking the first 21 days, or excuse me, we're going to do 21 days from the 11th to the 31st of January. We're gonna take some time during January to just give the Lord more of our time, right? Um, we've been talking about being Jesus focused, and so we're gonna attempt to give up something that we like, we desire, and you can tell one or two people just for accountability, right? You don't have to make an announcement. And we're gonna take that time and pour back into praying for our nation, praying for our family members, um, praying for our friends, um, and just getting more intimate with the Lord. Just first, as a team, as a family, we're gonna do that collectively. 
um, the first uh, month of this uh, 2021. So the reason why we're starting on the 11th, so that you can get some time, right? So perfect. Okay, next slide. Thank you. Um, the reason why we're starting on the 11th, so that you can get some time to talk to God about what it is, you know, he wants you to surrender, right? We don't want it to be a brash thing, but what it is he wants you to surrender. If it's food, you might have to go to the grocery store and stock up on something different, fruits and vegetables, okay? And so if you, if you have some personal questions, we can talk about why the fast offline too. And maybe I'll say something about it at New Year's Eve, so to just get more encouragement, all right? And that's all we have for, for you all today. Good afternoon, family. Now, nah, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try it again. Good afternoon, family. Good afternoon. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So y'all know what time it is. It's offering time, okay? This is a part of the service that everybody can participate in. We've given our gifts to our friends and our loved ones and our family. Now we got to give to God. So we're going to take up a physical offering as always, but there's a QR code in the program if you would like to give online, okay? So go with me as we go before God. God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for being able to come into your house one more time. God, we thank you for this holiday season, just being able to spend it with our, our newfound family here. God, we ask that as we give, that you just bless everything that we give. God, let us give for those who cannot. God, let us give an expectation of 2021, God, knowing that in the end, you're pleased because we're giving with a cheerful heart and it's going towards the expansion and the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen, amen. How many of you all are grateful that he waited for you? I mean, if you're really grateful, give a round of applause to the Lord because we, like the song says, I don't know where I would have been if he had not waited for me in all of my wretched decisions if our Lord was not patient and waiting for all of us. So today we have a great opportunity that we have a young man in our chapel community who had received his call to preach back in 2007. And so as an Air Force Academy grad and a contracting officer doing all the things and being a light in his workplace, he has recently decided, uh, maybe about two semesters in, to attend seminary. And so he is allowing the Lord to uh, give him formal education um, so that he can do what he was called to do. And so I'm going to read um, from 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verses uh, five through eight. And you guys can remain seated because this is just exhortation before he comes up to preach. All right, as I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lewis and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore. Do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. So this is a book where Paul is writing towards, uh, I guess you would call his protege, a son in the ministry, who, as we see in the first couple of scriptures, was raised by a grandmother and a mother encouraging him faithful women um, in the ministry and so he's acknowledging the the foundation that women or parents place in is inside of their children so there's very important to lay a foundation and pour in the truth at an early age of your children um, then he is saying to him reminding him to flat up his gift that dwells with inside of him so Timothy, as a believer, as a young man, seeing not only how his mother and his grandmother loved the Lord, but also being um, mentored by, by Paul, Paul is now encouraging him to that very thing that God has given to you, practice it, right? Um, don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed that I am suffering because Paul is in jail. He's been beaten, shipwrecked. Don't be ashamed that I'm doing all of this for the gospel, right? And so when we talk about a community, there are some people in our faith community that, like, man, they got it all together. There's nothing going on. They're, sex, they're successful and rich. And then you have other people that will struggle, but they both love Jesus. And at the end of the day, we need both of those people. And so Paul was one of those young men who, who struggled. He wasn't rich, but yet God gave him everything he needed. And so when I'm thinking of um, Cody today, um, I'm so grateful that he has the opportunity to exercise the gift that the Lord has placed inside of him. And uh, y'all going to go ahead and give him a warm GS family welcome. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, me and my wife have been here since 2019, summer of 2019. Um, so we have always been a part of the chapel community, uh, and we just thank you guys for, you know, coming and, and being a great part of this, you know, base, because it can be a very lonely assignment for a lot of people, 
And without Jesus, and without God, it can get even worse. And that's why the title of the message today is Trust in the Lord with All Your Heart. But first, I would like to you thank a couple of people. I would like to first thank God for his mercy and grace, because without him, then there's nothing. There's no, there's no this. Without God and without Jesus, this is pointless. Second, I would like to thank my lovely wife, Jennifer. Without her support, I could not be up here. Uh, I, would, I would not be successful in school, or, nor at work. So I, I love you, and you're amazing. But, and lastly, I'd love to thank the chapel staff of Chaplain Klondicky, Chaplain Almond Leary, Chaplain Hughes, and Chaplain Black for this opportunity and the mentorship they have given me over the past you know, year. Uh, they, they, we have a, are very fortunate to have such a great chapel staff here, and I am thankful for all of them. But me, like all of us, I am just a man who was a sinner, and through sin had a debt that needed to be paid. But that debt was paid through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for my sin. It was nothing that I did to deserve my debt being paid off, but through his mercy and grace and his sacrifice. But what a year 2020 has been. It's been a long one, but as we wrap it up, you know, we, we may have a lot of questions about God's path or direction for our lives. What, where are we going? What does 2021 look like? Will it be another 2020? Or will it be something new? Is it a new start? Well, we have an answer for these questions found in God's Word. This, more, this afternoon, we'll be focusing on Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. But before we dive in, let's get a brief introduction to the book of Proverbs. So the book of Proverbs' general theme is to describe and instill wisdom, primarily a wisdom that's founded in the fear of the Lord. Now, fear of the Lord does not mean like I'm going to go cower in the corner because God's going to smite me down. That, that's not what it means. It means to be respectful. It's a respectful fear. It's a humbling fear. It is to be submissive to God and his will and direction for our lives. It's to, to fear the Lord is to say, you know what, I'm not going to try and do this on my own, but I'm going to trust and submit to you. Now this brings us to chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. As I pull it up, sorry. Technology, right? It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Let's break these two verses down. We're going to have, break them into five parts. The first part is trust in the Lord. The second part is going to be with all your heart. The third is going to be do not lean on your own understanding. And the fourth part is in all your ways acknowledge him. And finally, and he will make straight your paths. So trust in the Lord. What is trust? Well, Webster defines trust as an assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something, one in which confidence is placed, dependence on something future or contingent. So how does that relate to us? Well, in Proverbs, in this particular verse, uh, this is necessary for fulfilling any of the wise ways of life mentioned through the book of Proverbs. However, it's extremely applicable. Sorry, I'm from the South, so English is my second language. My first language is Southern and or, and or redneck. I apologize. Uh, Jen, I was, Jen's trying to teach me how to speak, but it's, uh, we see how it's going. Um, but with that, how we can apply that to us today? Well, trust is essentially faith. If we look at that definition, trust in the Lord is faith in the Lord. It's faith in God. Well, you would say, why should we have faith in God? Well, first of all, his character. God never fails us. He never leaves us. 
Like the song said earlier, where would we be if he left us? We would be nothing. Without him, we are nothing. We need him in our life in order to help us along this journey called life. And we'll get more into that with the later points. He saves us. He's a good father who always keeps his promises. We can find plenty of examples in the Old Testament and New Testament where he always keeps his promises to his children. Look at Abraham. God promised Abraham a son. Granted, it took a long time for that son to finally come. And Sarah, his wife, even laughed when God said, hey, I'm still going to give you a son. She's like, look, I'm old. And she still laughed, but God came through. He never fails us. But what does this not look like? Well, trust in the Lord does not look like Aaron in the golden calf found in Exodus chapter 32. So Aaron had already seen everything that God had done, right? He was with Moses when, during the, when they were being delivered from Israel. He saw God part the Red Sea. He was chosen to be a priest for the children of Israel, the head priest, second to Moses. But when Moses went away, went up on Mount Sinai to uh, speak to God and have, give, receive the Ten Commandments, Aaron failed, and he succumbed to the people and built a golden calf. His failure showed a lack of trust in God and succumbed to the people around him. Have we ever done that? Where we know what God wants us to do, where we are going, what the straight and right path is, but we have people around us who don't, you know, are not moving in the same direction as us, and yet we listen to them, and we end up falling off the path. But it's, it's and it happens to all of us, it's just, it's just part of this life, and that's when, where the second part comes in, with all your heart. We may have trusted in God, but we weren't doing it wholeheartedly. We weren't following. We were trusting just a little bit. We were like, you know what? I'll go to church on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday is mine. I love to play golf, and I'm, I'm, you, you've, got, you've got an hour on Sunday, God. That's not with all our heart. Not just a little, but everything we are. That is the next part of the verse. Trust in the Lord with all our heart. Jesus even mentions this. When the, when the Pharisees ask him, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus says, we are commanded to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and with all our mind. This is the greatest commandment. It is God first, putting God first and, and foremost in our lives. We cannot fulfill this commandment without trusting in the Lord. You have, in order for there to be love, there has to be trust. I can tell you as a newly married man, Grant, I've only been married since April, so if there's no trust there, the kind of, the, there's no real, there's like love, but it's not love, love, if that makes sense. Granted, you probably guys are like, he does not know what he's talking about. Keep in mind, I'm newly married. I'll probably get in trouble for that later. Um, <laughs> But what does this not look like? Peter in Matthew 14, starting in verse 25. And Jesus, you see Jesus is walking on the water. And in, in jumping down to verse 28. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took him, saying, Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? Peter trusted in the Lord. 
He trusted enough to do something that I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have done, is to try to walk on water. I don't like, I don't like to swim, so it's definitely not something I would try to do. But Peter stepped out of the boat, and he was focusing on Jesus. He, when he was focusing on Jesus, he was walking on water towards him. But when the waves started crashing, when the wind started to pick up, and he took his eyes off Jesus, what did he do? He immediately started to drown. In our lives, when we take our eyes off of Jesus, when we take our focus away from the right path, we start to sink. We have to trust in the Lord with all our heart. And that means to believe and have faith in God that he is who he says he is yesterday, today and forever. When we start to doubt, when the wind starts to pick up, when the waves start crashing around us, we have to stay focused and keep our trust and our hearts directed towards Him. Otherwise, we'll start to sink. Because Jesus was sent to die on the cross for our sins and rose again on the third day, not for anything that we have done, but for, in order for us to gain everlasting life. You know, sometimes in our lives, you know, we'll be like, all right, we're focused, we're good, we're moving, but some of the stuff just doesn't make sense. This is where the third part of the verse comes in, do not lean on your own understanding. You're sitting there, have you ever worked hard and did the right thing? You're going to church, you're doing your devotionals, you're, you know, you're living for the Lord, you're progressing in your life, and it's just like you watch others who aren't doing the same get pushed ahead of you at work. Or maybe you, deserved, you thought you deserved to get promoted, and you studied hard and proved yourself. You, know, you got that four or five rating on your EPR, and it just fell through. Or maybe you did all the right things in a relationship and it just fell apart. It's, it's hard because you sit there and you're like, this just doesn't make sense. This does not make sense. I'm God, I'm doing everything right. I'm, do, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is your will. It is important that we do not lean on our own understanding when looking for God's will. Paul writes in Romans 12, verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. When we put our faith in worldly things and worldly definitions of success, I can guarantee you it will let you down 100% of the time. When you put your faith into, you know, a person, a sport, it could be a school, it could be anything. Lord knows I'm an Atlanta Falcons football fan, and if I put my faith in them, they will let me down a thousand percent of the time. But on a serious note, who won't let you down? God will never let you down. Even though it may seem like you're losing right now, we will win in the end if we just have faith. When we are saved, we have to change our mindset from a worldly, materialistic mindset to a mindset that's focused on God. And we cannot focus how the, on how the world defines our success, but how the Lord defines it. Because we can have short-term happiness in worldly things, which will fade away. 
but there is joy in the Lord that will last forever. And that brings us to our fourth point. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In everything we do, we must live a life that shows God's love through us and to him. In Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 26, it says, And he said to them all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the angels. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In order to complete this, we must deny ourselves and take up our crosses daily. It is our duty and our job for when we love God to focus on Him, we must deny our flesh and our sinful nature and our worldly desires and focus on the Lord. Because what does it profit to get all this worldly thing if we don't have Jesus? What does it profit to get the X rank or to get the X dollar in your bank account if there's no Jesus? It's nothing. It disappears. We can't take it with us. It stays here when we leave. And that is what is essential to our lives is that Jesus is everything that we need. And God will never fail us. Even when times get hard and the struggles come, God will be there. You may not think that he's there, but he will be there. And he will make your path straight. Straight doesn't mean an easy life full of prosperity or riches or success. It is a life in tune with the will of God, together in step with Him, progressing towards the ultimate goal of an eternal life with Him. We see in Matthew, as I pull it up, 7 out of 13 through 14, Jesus says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are many. The narrow gate, the hard life, because as wide is the path, that leads to destruction. But we are to focus and stay on that narrow way. I'm currently reading through an old book. It's called Pilgrim's Progress. If you haven't read it, highly recommend it. It's an allegory for a Christian life. It was written by John Bunyan when he was in prison uh, before uh, the Reformation. It's actually a really good book. It's, an, like I said, an allegory for our lives. And it's about a man named Christian Pilgrim who is traveling on this narrow path. And there are several people that come to try and pull him off the path. But he stays focused. He does get pulled off sometimes, but he stays focused on trying to get to the narrow gate. That is where we're trying to go, the narrow gate that which is heaven. But staying focused and staying on track with that is where we are going. And that is where if we put all this together Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. 
Jesus, this birth is big if we think about having faith in the Lord and fulfilling the commandment of to love our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. You know, as we start to wrap up, Charles Spurgeon says, My hope lives not because I am not a sinner, but because I am a sinner for whom Christ died. My trust is not that I am holy, but that being unholy, he is my righteousness. My faith rests not upon what I am or shall be or feel or know, but in what Christ is and what he has done and what he is doing now for me. Hallelujah. God doesn't promise us that this life will be easy. Instead, our life may be one full of trials and hardship. It is in our trials and in our struggles that God is most glorified. You know, an example of this is maybe you've had a loved one, someone you cared deeply about who was sick, and you prayed, and you prayed, and they never got better. And they ended up passing away. And a, a great example of trusting in the Lord with all your heart and leaning not on your own understanding is praying like this. Through the deepest possible pain, God is enough. He is good. He will take care of us. He will satisfy us. He will get us through this. He is our treasure. Whom I have in heaven but you. And on earth, there is nothing I desire besides you. My heart and my flesh and my loved one may fail. You are the strength of my heart and my portion forever. This is the culmination of trusting in the Lord with all our heart. Maybe you're here today and you don't know God or you haven't heard about Jesus or his sacrifice for our sins so that we could have eternal life with him. Maybe you've been trying to figure out life on your own. I know I've been there. I, I said, you know what, God, I am, I'm going to do this my way. And it did not work out. But sometimes you don't realize why you can't figure it out when you're on your own. But what I can tell you that if anyone believes and has faith in Jesus that he came to die as a sacrifice for our sins, you can have, you will have eternal life. There is nothing that we can do in order to earn this. It is through the grace of God we are saved. Let us pray. Dear God, we just come to you today to thank you for everything that you have done and everything you will do. Father, I pray that if there is someone out here who does not know you, may you soften their heart and you just call out to them, Father. Or maybe there is someone here who said, you know what, I've, I'm tired of doing it on my own, God. I need you. And you just call out to them. Father, we, we just pray that we can trust you completely because without you, there's nothing. For you say, without faith, it is impossible to please you. God, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Thank you.